Hello everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of Paca Meeple Plays. Sorry, addressing some volume there. Alright, good. We're good. I'm Josh, and we are going to play a game called Hostage Negotiator. Ooh. So I have some uh, thoughts about this game. I have some feelings, some internal stuff boiling around about this game. Uh, it is a card game, uh, a single player only card game that came out a few years ago back in 2015 uh it is designed by aj was it porfirio i believe uh let's look at the credits and van Ryder games yeah board game designed by aj porfirio and the app developed by whoa, whoa can't scroll that uh peter cosset uh so peter cosset uh, worked on this app and then yeah board game published by van Ryder games uh yeah funded on kickstarter about three years ago. So it is, as you can kind of tell, is a game about hostage negotiation. It is a interesting theme. Uh, I am not one that believes that all games should have very safe and simple themes. The, the game should feel free to tackle difficult subject matter. I am 100% on board with that. There is no... There's nothing wrong with art exploring sensitive subjects, as long as it's done tastefully, and as long as it's done in a way that is respectful to the real-life situations that may be similar to it. So this game, um, I don't feel like it's that, mm, yeah. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and kind of jump in, and I'm going to give you some examples. So... You, when you start a game, you pick an abductor who is your villain, essentially, for the game. Uh, they all have different powers, different uh, kind of things that happen over the course of the game. So it's very different depending... The game plays out very differently depending on which abductor that you are up against. Um, they all have different um, triggers and uh, demands that could come up. So there's a little bit of... There's some variability and replayability there. Um the first one, the default one, is this Arcane Masua. Um, it's a very straightforward, like, oh, this guy has got hostages in a building. That's the one we're going to play. I I have to show you really quick, though, this lady right here, Donna Scarborough. So this is where one of my problems with this game comes through. So this picture is implied to be kind of silly. Like, look at that face. Like, she's kind of like, ha, I've got guns, ha. If you click on her, and if you read like the card flavor text that kind of describes this abductor, it is not, oh, what's the word? It is not good, I guess is a good way of saying it. Um, she's essentially an elementary school teacher that has had enough uh, and has brought guns to school and has holding her elementary school classroom hostage at gunpoint till her demands are met. Like it, that is fucked up. I am not cool with that, so I don't care what people might think about me because of that. It doesn't matter. I do not like that at all. So I am never going to do that because I think that is gross in the way that she's kind of portrayed as like, ha I'm silly. Like, that's just, no, thank you. Nope. Pass. Uh, so that part already like, ugh. We'll do the default, like the intro guy, Arcane Masua. Even then, like holding hostages, never like good terrorist, you know, uh, situation. Whatever the game, the game at least has interesting mechanics, so it has that going for it. Uh, so that's kind of why I wanted to at least play it, you know, show you the game, because on a mechanical level, it's kind of fascinating. Um, so you can see here. Uh, a little bit of history of what's going on. Uh, he has seven government officials that are uh, hostages right now. So uh, if you've never played before, uh, you get some assistance or you're offered assistance from like the police chief. Um, I've played a little, so I'm going to just say give me gameplay advice. I'm not very good at this game. Uh, so I will try my best to figure out what's happening. So what you can see is a little bit of setup here. And the way this game works is that, like I said, it's a solo only game and it's like a deck builder. So if you've played uh, or watched, you know, videos of us playing other deck builders, like, uh, what are some examples of deck builders? 
I can't even think of a single deck build right now. My brain's like, bleh. Uh, so if you've played other deck builders, um, then you know, like like Legendary, thank you. Good grief. That uh, you are playing cards, you get points, you can buy more powerful cards. The thing that's interesting, though, is that in this game, whenever you play cards, all cards that you played are not just discarded, they're actually returned back to the market, and you have to rebuy them every time. Now, your ha starting hand of six cards all have zero cost, so you will always be able to buy those back for free, but it essentially takes like a round because you play them, they go to the market, and you can't buy them again until the following round after that. So there's a really interesting kind of back and forth of not wanting to dump too much, or sometimes it is, but then your next turn is essentially just regathering all of your cards back. Um, so that part's kind of cool. So what I need to do in order to win this game, as you can see, there are seven hostages in the hostage pool. Uh, so far, none have been saved or killed. There's also a threat level below that that dictates how many dice I get to roll whenever I play a card, uh, as well as a couple of demands. He's got a major demand, currently an escape demand. Those demands are face down. I don't know what they are yet. I can play cards that reveal those demands, though, and then a lot of times they'll be like, I can sacrifice something to get a reward. Is typically how those work. Uh, in the very bottom left, you'll see a terror deck uh, that has 11 cards in it. Every At the end of every round, a card from the terror deck is revealed, and something typically bad happens. So it's, it's recommended to try to get through the game as quickly as possible before the terror stuff just escalates out of control. Now, the game ends, for me, uh, in a victory, I should say. The game ends in a victory, if I'm able to save enough hostages, save more than half of the hostages, so four, uh, and then get the hostage pool all the way down to zero, um, and then I'm able to essentially either kill or apprehend the abductor, the mastermind. So that's how I can win the game. Now, if he kills more hostages, then I'm able to save. So if he, if he kills four or more hostages, then he potentially will end the game and if he escapes, oops, I should uh, not let that die on me. If he escapes, that can also end the game for me in failure. So, like I said, I'm not very good at this game. But uh, so the way the round plays out is that essentially each round is a conversation. Like we're on the phone with the guy and trying to like talk him. So that all the cards are kind of like, oh, small talk. Oh, oh, making small talk. What are your demands? All right, I'm just going to keep cool. And they all do different effects. So, so as you can see, like the little minus one um, speed, like the, uh, the speedometer symbol, that means the threat level will decrease minus one, and then I gain plus one conversation points. Uh, conversation points are what you use to buy more cards, essentially your spending power. So what I want to do is, like I said, I don't really know what I should be doing. Uh, I think early on it's best to reveal demand. So I'm going to play this card. I roll some dice. And I got a partial success. Now, as you saw there, there's a, on the dice, there's a 1, 2, and 3 are blank. A 4 is a partial success, and then a 5 or a 6 is a full-on success. So I rolled a, a 2 and a 4, so I got 1 partial. I can convert a partial into a full success uh, by, do this, I discard 2 cards face down, so I don't get their effect. Let's do small talk, convert that one, and keep cool and so now I may reveal one of the abductors demands or gain a conversation point so we're gonna do that and we're going to reveal a demand and I will reveal his major demand so I can spend four conversation points uh, on a turn on any turn to concede during any conversation uh, for oh a hostage so I save a hostage and I drop his threat level down to two um, so if I can get the hostage count down to zero and play that. So, like, essentially, if the hostage pool is zero and then I free another hostage, that is uh, capturing him. So that's how you're able to actually stop him. So, okay. There's a penalty for conceding, though. At the beginning of each terror phase, uh, I get plus two. Oof. Okay. That could be bad. Uh, so... Her advice is to play, what are your demands again? Uh, yeah, let's do that. So, what are your demands? I'm gonna roll some dice. I got nothing. So, threat will go up one. One of the things that I don't like about this game is that it's all dice-driven. So, every card you play uh, has, as you can see there, the result of a complete failure, which is on the bottom. 
a partial success in the middle or a complete success in the green on the top layer. So it's all kind of luck driven, which I don't really care for. Uh, but, you know, is what it is. So, oh, all right. Got a success. So threat will decrease by one. Keep that down. We're going to play small talk. Hopefully get some, okay. I gained two conversation points. And so now I have him out of cards. So at the end of a conversation phase, or essentially at the end of the play cards phase, is when you go buy stuff. So this is like the, um, what do they call it? The purchase phase, I guess. So I can spend as many points as I want, but I should, I'm going to buy these for uh, one each, and that will be all I can afford. So now you can see that my everything in my play area all goes away, and that's going to the market. The only cards I have in hand now are the two that I just bought. So if I didn't buy any cards, uh-oh, whatever kills a hostage, that will increase by one due to unrevealed demands. Ugh, oh, Jesus. Okay. We can still win this game. We, yep. Got it. Got it. So, yeah, if I didn't buy any cards during that last turn, I would have zero cards to play, which definitely could happen. Uh, and that's actually what she's suggesting because I this what I meant was is basically a you play this or re-roll dice, and I have no cards that roll dice at all. So I'm essentially going to pass my entire turn. I'm going to buy back all of my zero cost cards. So now I will have a very full hand. As you can see there, you have space for exactly 10 cards. So I have eight now. It'll be a pretty good turn next turn. Uh, okay, so a new demand has been revealed. So water. Uh, this demand can be conceded to roll an extra die on some critical rolls. It's risky to use unless the food demand is also in play. So if I, I can concede at any time to gain an extra die for like that whole turn but for doing so, when any threat roll is failed, I lose conversation points. Okay. Or I end the conversation when any threat roll is failed. Ugh. Gross. Okay. So. Thank you. That's what I was going to do, because I want to reveal that demand. Alright. So let's, uh... We should not reroll here. Let's reveal. Okay. So, bus. So, he has escape demand that he wants a bus to escape on. I can spend four conversation points to concede uh, for a hostage and plus one to my next threat roll. But the abductor escapes at the end of the conversation. So, meaning that uh, if I don't use that to capture him, he will just escape and the game will be over. So, I basically have to only do... If I'm going to do that... So, I can just choose to not ever do that. But if I do... I have to make sure it is the very end of the game and that the game will end for me doing that. Otherwise, I will lose because he will escape. So, um, okay, so play. So she wants us to play small talk. So I'm going to discard a couple of cards. So if you need conversation points, uh, you can just discard a card face down in order to get them. So that is what I am going to do. I don't need what are your demands again, so let's do that. I've got two points. I'm going to play small talk. Let's roll some dice. Um, okay. So we're just going to do that. Conversation's going to be over. He didn't really like what I had to say there. He didn't like my small talk. But we're going to buy a copy of Minor Extraction. As you can see here, if successful, I recover two hostages. So I save two hostages on a full success. And uh, I, on a partial success, I save a hostage, but I increase the threat level. So I've got to be careful with that. All right. So terror phase. We're going to flip a card. And, oh, threat goes up two. That's really bad. So the way it works, it's I don't really get the, the numbering or naming system, but uh, threat goes from S minus one. So if, like one and S, essentially. Uh, if you get all the way down to S, uh, you get three dice to roll, which is great. Uh, if you are between two and six, you get to roll two dice. But if you are at K, which is seven, essentially, uh, you only get to roll one die. So it's really bad right now. So we're going to play, we're going to take her advice, and we're going to play Keep Cool in order to hopefully reduce the terror level. Nope. 
Uh, my strong suggestion is try for a reroll. So I'm gonna play that. What I meant was <laughs> what I actually was trying to say was that. Thank you. Okay. So we're gonna drop the threat level. And now we get to roll two dice again. So we're gonna play small talk. Hmm. Okay. Great. She wants to end the conversation. I'm really interested why and not go for the minor extraction, but we will go ahead and, well, I guess that'll give me like maybe very little cards next turn. Um, you need to trust me. Okay. So you need to trust me until the conversation ends. All partial successes are successes. That's really good. All right. I think, I think what the plan is, I'm going to play that to increase my odds of getting my minor extraction to go off. So threat will increase by one. So I'm back, unfortunately, up to there to K. So I think we're going to have to keep cool in order to bring it down. So let's see if this will work. Well, there you go. Okay, that was good. So we're back down to six. And it can't go higher than K. So K is like the highest, highest level. Um, and if I remember right, I could be mistaken here, but if it go, if you're at K already and your threat level would increase, he instead kills a hostage for every point, essentially it would go above K. So I think K is supposed to be kill and then S is supposed to be save. Cause if you're at S, uh, if you're at one or whatever, and you keep lowering it, you will save hostages that way. So that's what I think. That's my interpretation of it. I don't really know, but we're going to go with that. Um, so let's do, uh, da -da. I'm gonna play You Need to Trust Me. Got it, Whew -hoo -hoo. all right, got it. So now we're gonna play a minor extraction and I really, yes, Ugh. hostage is rescued and threat will increase by one. Oh, she wants to try for a reroll, okay. So we're gonna reroll that, oh, nope. Dang, okay. Congratulations, we have saved our first hostage. We need to keep up the good work, try to rescue three more to prevent the villain from winning. Got it, that's what I'm working on. I know, it's not good. Okay, so we're going to discard that and discard that and then play small talk for hopefully, nope. Uh, oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, the conversation's gonna end, no big deal. Okay. So we're gonna get another minor extraction in our purchase phase. So I'm not gonna have a whole lot to do this turn, but it's still gonna be good. I don't really like my threat level being at K and then it increased, so I believe that's gonna kill a person. Yep. Not good, not good. Okay, so we're gonna try to keep it cool, buddy. Keep it cool, thank you, okay. Good, good, good. Oh, there's my dog. Hi, Roxy. Uh, okay, so I'm back down to two dice. We're gonna play small talk. Nice. So I get two conversation points. Excellent. And then we're gonna, oh, not do minor extraction. That's really interesting. I thought for sure we would try to go for the minor extraction. I guess the risk of failure, hmm. Well, okay. We will take the computer's advice. We'll see how this goes. Uh, so we want it, she wants us to buy the two re-roll cards and then we will go from there. I guess that's the, okay. So I'm starting to see the, what the computer is suggesting. So it's saying, draw and resolve the next, uh oh. Roll a die if the result is less than or equal to the current threat level. Oh, geez. Okay. Uh oh. So we will lose the game if Arcane hurts one more hostage. Okay. So yeah, we're using, uh, we're saving that minor extraction to try and prevent a failure because if we do, so if you can see there on a failure, we lose a hostage. In that case, it's going to end the game for us. So we're going to minor extraction. I've got to reroll if necessary. Hostage rescued, and so we gotta reroll that uh, that failure. C 
Come on. We're going to re-roll again. That's, well, so that, I believe... Okay, that just takes us to that, so... Okay. That was rough. Ouch. I'm at negative one conversation points now. This is not looking good. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I gain a conversation point, so I'm at to zero. Yeah, it's not super great. So that's the one thing I don't like about this game is that, like you saw there, totally random, like, oh, you're spending resources to buy cards. But then on top of that, you're at the mercy of a die roll, which I don't find fun at all. Um, conceding this, okay, so we got food to make. Conceding this to make could be a game saver. Best used as insurance against a bad roll on the last conversation of the game. Um, okay. All right. Good to know. Yeah, things are not going well here. So we're going to try to keep it cool. We need to lower that threat level down. Woo! Okay. Got it. We're okay. So she wants us to get back up. Yeah, what are, what are your demands are, is pointless. Uh, so we're going to get rid of those. And then we're going to play small talk to... Please... Ugh, come on. Okay. Uh, do you wish to concede? We should not concede the food demand here. It can be a game on the right search, so it's better to wait till we really need it. So we will not concede it yet. It just requires uh, some points. Buy a minor extraction. Buy those. Not gonna have a whole lot of cards next turn, but it's fine. It's fine. Discard half the remaining red terror cards and then discard this card. And instead, discard two red terror cards and shuffle this card back in with the remaining. Oh my god. No, this event has no effect. So that terror deck is about to run out, and I believe that I'm going to lose the game if that happens. So I really need to save some people. That's not good. So I believe that it's just game over. Yep, you've lost over half the hostages. The abductor has escaped. Well. Awful. <laughs> Great. Cool. I guess it didn't save my previous win that I had. Maybe because I was playing with the uh, like the full tutorial on, so I just didn't even count my win that I had prior. So anyway, that's Hostage Negotiator. Um, I was just going to show you, so there's three other ones and then a locked one that, expansion, okay, so you'll have to uh, buy it, I guess, um, or Connor will unlock after you win against the first three abductors without tutorial help. So you have to beat the first three in order to get uh, that one unlocked. Like I said, like, I it's okay, like it's kind of an interesting uh, idea, like I like games that deal with slightly serious or you know slightly mature or whatever uh subject matters but i just don't feel like it really does it that well like it doesn't i don't know it doesn't there's nothing like it's not saying anything interesting about it like it's not a commentary on it's just a, an excuse to play cards and it's kind of like i don't know you're just yeah hostages are dying oh well oh and there's a cute puppy in the background that's making me feel better I don't know. I just don't. I don't really care for it. So I know it's kind of a popular game. Uh, I know a lot of people really enjoy it, and that's fine. Totally your right to enjoy any games that you want. But Hostage Negotiator, just not for me. So anyway, if you do enjoy it, though, let me know. Tell me all about it. Tell me why you like the game so much. Tell me why you don't. Maybe you agree with me. I don't know. I'm just some dude on the internet saying about games. So. Why don't you uh, go ahead and tell me, and then that'll make me feel better, because playing this game makes me feel kind of sad. All right, well, with that, I'm going to go pet a dog, because that's the only way in my life that really brings me any true happiness or joy. Bye, everybody.